C721, Change Management. Let's talk about it. Dear me, three to six months. Watch how I make you proud. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Xavier. This is Tech Xavier, where I share my journey in tech, both on the career side and the education and learning side. I am a recent WGU graduate and I got my degree in IT management and I was able to accelerate and get it completed with the help of my enrollment counselor and my program mentor and really just a desire to be done with school. I started my first course on November 1st and completed my last course on February 16th. In today's video, we're going to talk about change management and we'll talk about what the course is, what exactly is change management, why is it relevant to IT, and most importantly, how do you pass? So let's go ahead and get started. Let's check out the student portal. Okay, so here we are in the student portal. And as you can see, we're in the change management page. And if you need to confirm that, just check here. You'll have, when you started the course, there's an overview, course planning tool, some instructor information. Here they'll have the instructor's name, their contact information, and their office hours. In the announcements, you'll find some links to maybe the course resource page, and you'll also find similar information in the course tips. There's a course search, course chatter, course material, which is essentially the textbook. And then you have the performance assessment that you'll have to submit. And here are the competencies that you will learn or the learning objectives that you'll hit when you complete this task. So let's take a look here at the course resource page. This is a really good resource when you're trying to complete a performance assessment. It gives you a really simple guide on how to answer questions, what things to expect. And if we look here, you see that there is a template. So the templates are really handy. You're basically looking at the uh, requirements and they're kind of like an outline format or like a worksheet format. So you have section A, section B, C on the way down. You'll have requirements for how citations look, how many sentences minimally should your responses be, and then also what you should be looking at in terms of resources that you can pull from. And so here we have completing the performance assessment video one, systems of organization, organization life cycle models, uh, Woolner and Singe, Hope Haley, Balagon, action research model, innovation strategies, Cotter's eight step model, five pillars, and then some rules around citation and an intro to the task webinar. So all this information is available. And then these two items here are the various attachments and other resources you can download and review. Additionally, here are the materials on the course materials page. This is what the textbook contains. So unit one, like other courses, contains learning strategies, tips and tricks for you to be successful. You have the change management theories, and these break out into the foundation of change management, models and approaches of change organizations, and then change management theory summarized. You have diagnosing and planning change, innovation and leadership, implementing change, sustaining change, and here it breaks out into leadership for sustaining change and change across the organization. And then lastly, learning organizations. So these are all concepts that you're going to reference when you're creating your response or when you're writing up your performance assessment. So definitely pour over these. In this case, I generally don't like to read through everything, but what you can do is when you're reading or reviewing the performance assessment, it'll tell you what sections to refer back to in order to kind of get a deeper understanding or be able to respond. And so in the performance assessment, you'll get a scenario. That scenario will be a reflection of what happens in the real world. And then you're going to use these various topics to answer questions related back to the scenario. So when I took the performance assessment or when I submitted the first time, I got some feedback and there were some things that I overlooked or didn't pay attention to as closely. So I definitely recommend that you read the text or refer back to the text when you're doing your responses. The other thing is I want to kind of share with you some things that you can kind of think about in preparation for this course, just in general. So the first thing is that when a company or an organization needs to go through change, a lot of it, a lot of the acceptance of change is really based on how well you capture the needs of the user base, 
how well you capture the needs of the stakeholders, and then how well you inform at every pivotal stage of change what is happening to the stakeholders so they can convey that to the users or to the customers. And that's really a big part. A lot of times people don't feel engaged with change because number one, especially in tech, there's a lot of concern about things replacing someone or replacing me. And so there's a lot of anxiety around it. And so it's important for you to establish what this change is going to look like and what it isn't. The other thing to think about is you want to know how to make recommendations. And again, those recommendations will be based largely upon the input that you receive or the information that you gather in terms of like a survey or a questionnaire. Additionally, there's various change models. And so it's going to be important for you to connect the text that you're reading to a specific stage for the company in the scenario. So that's also something that you're going to be asked to do. And really, as long as you give good detailed responses, it's not about whether or not your answer is right or wrong. It's more about how will you support it based on the information that you provided. Even something that doesn't seem connected, you can always make a connection somewhere. And as long as you articulate that clearly, you'll be good to go. Okay, and the next point that I want to make is about the submission process. So it generally doesn't take WGU too long to grade or evaluate a paper. So that's one of the plus sides, especially if you're doing like a combination course. You can submit a paper, and by the time you finish maybe studying for the exam, the paper is graded, and then you can move on to the next piece. So that is one thing that I enjoy about the taking courses here. And the other thing is that when you're submitting work, the institution has like this software that basically checks similarity between your work and other work submitted. And so you're all almost always going to get a similarity score just because when you submit the template, the template is always included in each student's response. So don't let this scare you too much. Really though, when you go into the similarity report, you want to see where your paper stacks up against other papers. And there may be a lot of similarities that could maybe raise a red flag. And so you want to review that make sure that you're not plagiarizing, make sure you're using citations correctly and really just submit your own work. Because I can tell you that if you, you know, are copying or if you're trying to just get through stuff quickly without really getting the content, this stuff is going to come up again in your organization or whatever work you're doing. So you want to make sure that you understand change and what helps to enable change and how to get people on your side when you're trying to implement something either behalf of the organization or behalf of a department or unit. Okay, so that about wraps it up for this video. There's not a whole lot to pour into on this particular subject other than read the materials, cross-reference them with the scenario that you receive as part of the prompt, and just do your best to answer each question. Also, make sure you look at the rubric so that you can see what constitutes its competency because anything short of that you're going to have to resubmit the paper and you do have to get competent in every area. So you can't get seven out of eight and then still expect to pass the course. Everything has to show up as competent. So with that said, thank you for watching this video. I wish you luck. If you're taking this course now, if you're anticipating taking this course shortly, make sure you give yourself the time to focus in on the materials and I'm sure you do well. I'm sure you'll do well. So thank you again for watching. And remember, school is going to be hard. Things are going to be difficult. And all I ask is that you don't be too hard on yourself. Just work hard on yourself. Work hard on your study habits, your routines, and how you track everything you're doing. My name is Xavier. This is Tech Xavier. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Dear me. Three to six months. Watch how I make you proud.